Hello, my name is Trudy Lewis. This is a Moon City Press reading. I'm reading from my novel, The Empire Rolls. This is a novel about roller derby and recession. The Empire Rolls. I still patrol Karst Park days, a gun on my belt and a diet soda in my cup holder. But on Saturday nights, I work the rink calling roller derby, trying to match my crackly new radio voice to the beat of the bout. I do a creditable job of it, too, for the sake of these hometown girls who may never reach stardom in any wider arena, if not for the benefit of my mom, who shows up regularly with her cane and earpiece to watch her favorites get knocked into the wall. I do it for my sister Cherie, who died in the 70s and who cruised the same track backward under the disco ball, insisting on taking the male role in the couple skate her hips swerving like a rudder under some boy's sweaty class ring. When I think of her now, the long red hair parted in back with her own motion and streaming forward into her face, I wonder if it was courage or fear that made Cherie proceed this way, backward into her destiny. I wonder if I'm taking the same route, childless and divorced, veering into the midpoint of my forties, still rushing backward, raising my own wind. I looked down at the rink and nod at the girls in their camouflage team shirts, their bright hard helmets, and their skippy skirts. The youngest is 18, the oldest 37, and they shimmer with sex and suppressed aggression. They are students and mothers, nurses and teachers, war vets and veterinarians assistants, policewomen, waitresses, insurance claims adjusters, and clerks. They have spent the week cleaning up blood, submitting data and disposing of shit, all to the music of canned motivation and various forms of bad news. I take a long sip of clear soda and prepare for the onslaught. Chaz Enright, the manager of the Boonslick Bombers and owner of the Empire Roller Rink to boot, was emceeing the bouts at first. But some of the girls thought his comments were too disrespectful, referencing body parts on which he had no authority. Then one night, my niece, Rini, Raven pillaged the fans, broke down and told me she'd rather skate topless than have her tits called tickets one more time. Tickets, tickets, it's not a random obscenity, Chaz said when I took up the matter with him. That's what they call the sacred boobs of the founding mothers. Joni Weston and Calvello, they all had these big, beautiful tickets. You know, that's what gets the fans in the door. No, that's what pushes your talent out the door, I told him. If you don't stop embarrassing these girls, they're going to get disgusted and move on to the next fad down the line.